What's going on, my Brood War brothers? Welcome back to the show where I bring you some ladder games, the Daily Dose series here. It's been a minute. It's been a little while. I haven't done a solo cast since uh, before I went to Korea. Yeah, I did go to Korea last week. You guys probably saw some videos from me about it or heard about it uh, in the recent, most recent KCM. It was fun. It was great. It was a kind of a bucket list thing for me, a life goal thing for me. I really wanted to go and see it in person. So glad that I finally did, but we're back here in Japan, ready to continue this series now. And I just want to have fun with this, guys. I've been getting a little bit too serious about casting recently, I feel. Uh, I've been worrying about the numbers a bit too much. I've been Getting, um, you know, too mixed up in, you know, taking this too seriously. So I'm just going to try to have fun, try to enjoy myself here. You know, not worrying too much about the names um, and trying to get the absolute greatest cast um, or the, the greatest names that are going to get the, the most views. Today, we're going to look at a nice thick series here between Best, who is one of my favorite players, uh, one of my favorite Storm Boys here, and uh, his opponent, BTS, who I haven't really casted much. I've seen him quite a bit on the ladder. Wow, some great micro here so far from Best. Just putting the hurt on BTS here. He does lose one pro, but he gets a kill. Oh, he's gonna get the second. Oh, oh, oh that's so dirty. How the hell was that able to shoot over top? How the hell was the probe able to hit the uh, drone in the back there? That is crazy. Looks like he's going to try and beat this with double sunken. I don't think he can beat two cannons with two sunkens, man. Uh, even with five lings on the way, it's going to be close. Um, let's see how this goes. These are both getting pretty low. Here comes those five lings. Dude, he can't even get back there, man. BTS is just chumped out of this one, I think. He's gonna go, but one, just target. One one hit on each one. It's gonna kill them both. Dude, Best did this really, really well. You don't see Cannon Rush very much, and BTS not really showing up so well for himself in game number one here. He is a 2,500 Zerg player, though. So, um... Yeah, I've seen a lot of his replays, but I haven't really done too many casts of them yet. So I thought we might uh, take a look at him finally. I know he hasn't, you know, qualified for ASL or anything yet. So he's probably not going to be quite the draw as somebody like uh, a Soul Key or uh, some of these other players that are more well known. But you know what? We're just going to have some fun with this. We're going to check out this nice long series here. They did play back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back six games in a row, so... Hopefully we'll see a better game than this one. Of course, a lot of people love to see Cannon Rush. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, mostly because I'm a Zerg player, but it is still exciting to see. Seemed like BTS really wasn't that interested in pulling too many drones, but he ended up having a huge response anyway, and now he's at seven drones. Dude. What are you going to do with seven drones here, BTS? We've got 22 probes on the other side. It's uh, <laughs> it's looking a little rough right now. Um, the two sunken colonies, I will never understand. Uh, especially when the, the hatch is still at full HP. That is crazy to me. I could understand putting a sunken over here, maybe out of range, trying to hit the pylon. But... Putting two Sunkins in range of two cannons is crazy talk. And it did not work out very well for him. What you like to do is, if you're going to try and break this, is wait for the hatchery to get low and then just send everything at the same time. Send all the lings at the same time to try and kill it. Um, but usually don't build Sunkins in range of the cannon. That's, that is wildness. Now he is still going to stay in this game somehow. Not exactly sure how or why, but we're going to try and play this one out. Just a very simple follow-up here from Best. Four gateway with the speed. Plus one's going to be done. And it's so simple 
this follow-up here uh, in what it can do. It's it's quite self-explanatory. Um, the only thing that you're going to be able to field, you're definitely not going to have Lair. 100% we know that. So there's no reason to build Corsair here. Uh, what could he possibly have? Well, he could have maybe thrown down a Hydrogen and a Gas and tried to, you know, try to rush us here. In that case, Zealots with Speed will crush it. Um, or he could just try to play defensively, you know, get some Lings out, maybe get a Sunk in or two. But in that case, Zealots are going to be able to put on that pressure. If he makes a mistake anywhere, if his wallins aren't perfect, uh, if he doesn't have lings, you know, defending everywhere, even then maybe we could slip in and kill the sunken colony. So that's a very smart follow-up play here from Best. He's not going to allow BTS to get back into this. He is a very good player. So we don't want to give him a shot. You don't want to give him a chance to potentially come back here. So he's going to start two sunken colonies over in his mineral line. Sunkins are a little bit late here, and yeah, that's there's not much else to say. The Sunkins are going to end up going down. Five, six Lings here. You need like, like literally two control groups of Lings maybe to try and stop this. Even then, with plus one, well, it's not quite done yet, but with plus one being finished, you're still going to have a hard time. You still might lose, you know, 24 Lings to this, so... Nice follow-up by Best. A pretty decent cannon rush. It did feel strong um, with the with the uh, pylon at the top there. It does seem like you could get your lings around the top of the pylon to get on top of the cannon. But, I don't know. That seemed about as good as it can get uh, in terms of cannon rush placement there. So... Well done by Best. We're going to jump into game number two. Again, guys, we got a lot of games to get through, so let's keep it going. All right, Best spawning here in the top right-hand corner. BTS in the bottom right. Oh, did I say bottom right twice? Top right, bottom right. You get the idea. BTS got to be a little bit salty after that first one. Opening a series with a cannon rush. It does throw your opponent off guard, and... Uh, you know, put them on the back foot a little bit. Now, he is on a barcode, so it's not 100% known for best that this is the same opponent over and over again. But BTS knows, and he should be able to adapt. Now, we're on Citadel here. Citadel, one of those wanky maps that uh, throws together a couple of new ideas with a pretty standard... Uh, you know base layout. It's not like an island map or anything like that But you've got these really weird Ridges around with no high grounds except for right at the tippy top of these little ridges There's one right there as well um, The center is very wide open, but there are very few Locations to push through and what I have found on this map is a lot of Protoss players like to go reverse air here um, reverse air, there's some weird tricky stuff that they can do as well. You can kind of half the map, get get half the map and be super defensive. Just hold back the Zerg player and kind of force them to mine out because we are on a map with not that many gases. It's mostly mineral bases in the center. I right, got four mineral bases in the center, mineral only, so they don't have a lot of minerals. So that can be uh, that can be frustrating to deal with, and it's something I've had to deal with a lot on the ladder. Now he will block this probes. Woo! That was a very good block there. Did you see that? Best was trying to come back with the probe, and the second drone body blocked that probe just at the second when he wanted to get in the way of the hatch being placed down. So very well done by BTS to just get that down. Semi on time. It's not perfectly on time here, but it's uh, it's close enough. Now, this is an interesting cannon positioning, right? We've got the the gateway gonna go down here, which does make a a tight wall, I believe. Actually, if you put the gateway against the wall here, I think you do still have a one gap right there. I think. I believe there's not there there's one gap there. It's not ling tight, so. There's going to be a tiny gap here and quite a large gap here on the left-hand side. So this is 
very helpful for protecting the forge against something like a hydralisk bust but it's not great against a lot of other things um for example if you if the person really is going all in and they can just run up and gun down this cannon uh, and then the other cannons are for example warping back warping in back here you can be in a tricky situation. Some Protoss players will set the wall up right at the front here and then warp the cannons in the back first, which is much more defensible against the Hydralisk bust. Then you can warp the, the other cannons in, in the front later, and you won't just straight up die. But Best being feeling pretty confident here that he's not going to just straight up die. Hedging his bets against a not all-in uh, hydralis bus where you're just trying to kill the forge and the front of the wall with you know five six hydras here and then transitioning into a long macro game but neither of those things are happening right now we're just going into a layer here as bts and we are mining gas but um we're not taking a second gas super aggressively or anything we're just going to be building out a ton of drones here as the zerg player Potentially going into a 5-6 hatch play. Uh, got some control out here in the front. You do want to add on a few more links here. As your second overlord pops and ling speed starts to finish up. But there's the spire. The first zealot is out. Probe going to try and sneak by. Does manage to slip through. The zergling net here. Not quite enough to prevent the scouting. Maybe he can get this. Okay, very well done. A little bit of a mistake there by Best in the angling of the probe. Ends up getting caught on that little ledge there. And a BTS. He's going to send a Ling around because he's not sure if some Zealots slipped out. So very heads up from BTS. You can see he pulled back just for a second, right? And Zealots could have slipped out there. So he's just being super careful. And look at this. Best is reacting here. The uh, Lings just tra tracking down that probe. Best does not like that. He doesn't like to be blind right now. So he's going to start two cannons. Let's see if he cancels as he sees the hatcheries that have been added on. He cancels one. So he keeps one going. Cancels one. He sees the spire. He's going to find an overlord here. Will he kill it? I believe he will. Just barely, though. It's going to be really, really tight. I'm going to see some Scourge being morphed here. There they are. Scourge being morphed there. Um, just one set, I suppose. Oh, there's another one somewhere else. Maybe here. No, nope. all of them are being morphed over here. Okay. So one Overlord goes down. Second Overlord will survive. Zealots are starting to push out. This is the, the tightrope walk here for uh, the Zerg player right now. What we're witnessing here is he's trying to get everything out while building the absolute bare minimum. And if you build the bare minimum here, you could end up getting punished by some of these Zealot pushouts. Uh, this Overlord actually might end up going down. This Scourge left the, uh, the Sair over here. That's a little bit rough. Looks like our sunken colony going to fall here. Great. Pulling back. Oh, we'll lose one drone there, though. And all the zealots will fall. The sunken colony goes down, but hey, I think we take that as a zerg every day of the week. We lost one drone and a sunken colony for four zealots. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be happy about that one, I think. Five mutilists are on the way, and we've gone up to three gas kind of crazy fast. Let's see what the reaction is back at home. We've got Templar Archives still producing Corsairs here. Plus one upgrade is on the way, but he might be going for that Ogre Zerg Gamer play. And there's not really too much that uh, Best can do on the ground to counter that. Ugh, that mining though. Ugh, watch this, guys. Okay, okay, he, he corrected it there. I thought it was going to keep going all the way around here. That would have been frustrating, but I like the, the setup here. Looks nice from BTS. Pretty hard to get on top of that sunken, and he did pay the price for getting on top of that. Um, do we have overload speed? No, and a DT is out on the map. 
Ling's just being spread everywhere, and here comes the Mutas. Now, this could get pretty chaotic. We don't have a lot of uh, Scourge here, but it is still a major threat. Five Corsairs. A six Corsair comes out. Okay, he's going to spread and drop the Scourge on these. Mutas are going down pretty rapidly here. The Scourge are going to chase, and the Mutas will have to back away. Really good micro here. Wow, best. Does lose a couple of Corsairs, but man, uh, being trailed by the Scourge and then still getting hits off on the Mutas, that's insanely good micro, insanely good control. And, I mean, we haven't seen something like that since, I guess, the last video with Snow when he was able to do some sort of, like, patrol micro with his Corsairs in order to pick off countless, countless Scourge. Um, let's see if he does a follow-up here. It looks like more Scourge are being built, but we are going into Missile Attack, so he will be switching into Hydralis sooner rather than later. Well, Hydra Den is just started, so it's going to have to be a little bit later. Diving here into the main once again. Here comes those Corsairs. Oh, Templar here with the Storm, killing off a few of the Scourge, but the Scourge are going to connect. In large part here, another Scourge gonna connect. Wait, what? That Scourge just would not attack. So annoying there. BTS gonna be pushed back. Um, we have an extra Corsair here. He should just fly that in and... Or he should just kill that. Kill that with your cannon, best. That thing was dead. That's not fair at all. I have no idea why that Scourge didn't connect, man. Right as it popped out, it was a sitting duck, and the Scourge just wouldn't do their job. Looks like we're going to make another round of drones here. Holy. BTS. Taking some serious liberties right now. He doesn't even have speed yet. And he's just going to build up to 53 drones. And uh, you just keep this play going. Diving into the main again, potentially. Uh, while the Corsairs are out on the field, there he goes. He sees the Corsairs. Oh, he gets one of them. Nicely done. Muta's here in high enough number to drive everything back. He sees, he's starting that Hydralis production now, but this is a tricky situation. And so far, BTS has really maneuvered himself very nicely. So, I'm liking it, man. I'm, I think BTS is a pretty solid player. If you just watch this game and you don't watch the, the previous game, then you would definitely think so too. Um, definitely a mishandling of that, that cannon rush, but here, where he's able to take control of the pace of the game by you know threatening that Ogre Zerg gamer play into the main, threatening that mass Muta Scourge play. Now he's got control. He's going to pump out a ton of Hydras here. And it's going to be right about the time when Best feels ready to move out, which is exactly when you want all of your stuff to come out, right? You never want to have your army uh, upgrades and everything coming out way before the opponent moves out. Then you're kind of wasting the opportunity to make drones. BTS here is walking that fine line and uh, treading it nicely here. We're going to have... One Zealot heading down to the bottom left. Just making sure there's no additional expansion down there. Bess is going to take his third now. And where are we going to go from here? We finished this the, the range upgrade. I don't see Lurker yet. So it's possible we're going to try to dive the Templar and go for just a mass Hydra play. Uh, it's really looking that way right now. But we'll see if he starts that upgrade here in the next few seconds. Now, I don't see it. So, yeah, we are going to try and dive this. It can go one of two ways. We could get all the Templar and just to completely smash. Or we could end up losing every single one of our Mutas. And, uh, okay, he gets them both. He gets all the Templar. Wow. Only two Templar in this army. And I don't see any more coming out. There's one... I guess it was waiting in the main for the, the Ogre Zerg gamer play. And another Templar does pop out over here, but he's really taking best to task uh, out in the front of his natural, killing off a lot of Dragoons. 
And now falling back to finish off every single probe here. This is very well done by BTS. He's got a lot of money in the bank right now and nothing in the production tab. So I assume there's a lot of larva waiting at home. That's a big mistake. But considering that he's doing this, uh, you know, getting this solid of a victory over best, I, I'm not going to blame him for missing a macro round. He's got to, his heart's got to be pounding right now. 350 APM. He's about to win this game, I think. Uh, all he needs to do is follow up with a solid follow-up. There it is. Lurker play is going to be that follow-up. Now, a lot of players, someone like Hero, maybe Soul Key, something like that, they're going to actually make another round of Templar and just continue with the Hydralis play. They're going to come back in, snipe all the Templars again, and just, you know, continue on. Uh, with that. Oh, he does make another round of Mutas. Look at that. Look at that. Hey. More Mutas coming out here. Uh, looks like some of the ones that were brought home, but some fresh ones are brought out as well. He's going to bring the full 11 together and look for those Templar snipes again. He does have Lurker on the way, but he's not relying on that. He's more looking for this. Once again, he gets the Templar that uh, hadn't cast the Storm yet. And he's going to go after this one on the right-hand side as well. Now, he can't... you got to be careful not to overextend here and lose absolutely everything. If you lose all of your Hydras, there could be a, an opportunity for a counterattack. But you know what? With the amount of reinforcements that are coming up here and how well these Hydras are trading, I don't think that's going to be an issue. He's got more Hydras popping out here. and Indeed, 15 more Hydras on the way. Plus, he's got this force over on the left-hand side that still needs to be dealt with. Building a Lurker Egg there at the front. Not going to be the best uh, use of his resources, but you know what? Fighting against these Dragoons right now is a winning battle. Dragoons just going to run back. Their number is so low. It's been reduced so much that there's really not too much the best can do right now. He's just trying to just get this third base. That's all he's thinking about right now. He's no longer considering any sort of a counterattack. He's no longer thinking about... You know, the late game or the long game here. Everything hinges on taking this base. The Nexus must finish. And the probes must be transferred. Otherwise, Best will just have to leave this one. He's here on the high ground waiting for BTS. BTS going to run up here with his Hydralis. He's got some Lurkers in the mix as well. The Observer comes back. That's got to stay alive. Pretty good storms here, but they were a little bit late, I feel. Uh, right as BTS was running up this ramp was the opportunity for Best to get those storms on the big clumps of Hydras, but he just didn't get the storms he was looking for, and his army is not going to be able to hold on here against the, sl the swarm of BTS. BTS falling back with a few Hydras, but he's already got this base down in the bottom left. He will be able to saturate that very very soon at least the gas will be saturated a hundred percent here in just a few moments and with that extra gas coming in he should be able to make his way up into hive add on more evolution chambers and take this to the late game if that's what best wants to do if best wants to hang on with this tiny little army and you know go down to one mining base here and try to you know face off against bts's huge army and you know multiple mining bases down here then i guess that's what we're gonna do well a dt does make it down here and makes bts life a little bit harder uh for the moment he's gonna have to send a, uh, an overlord down there he's gonna have to deal with that uh, dark templar and transfer a few more drones down to the bottom left but he's got plenty to spare now walking into a big storm here could actually throw the game back into best favor. You do not want to eat big storms. You want to run through like this, jump on top of Templar, snipe them down. The amount of DPS coming from this Dragoons, are, it's just not enough. So this is a great move by BTS. You don't want to stand in a line and just fight. Just running on top of the Dragoons and Templar is the right call. Now he's going to jump here on top of the Dragoons, start to target them down. More Lurkers are coming up. More Hydras as well. And GG is called BTS. Taking a big win here. Over one of the strongest Protoss players in the world. After getting Cannon Rush game number one. What's he got for us game number three? 
I like the mutilus play, but I bet Bess is going to try and counter that. Wait, what happened over here? Did we lose all of our drones? Oh my goodness. The 12 kill Dark Templar that I missed. I guess it went over here towards the third base, or the fourth base, excuse me, and massacred a bunch more drones. So, um, not really going to matter in this game. I won't bother to uh, picture and picture that, but just no a note that Bess was still pulling moves. He was still doing things that could help him to get back in the game, just in case he held off this attack, which he didn't, but it's a good try. Let's jump into game number three. Okay, best here in the bottom left. Let's see what colors they got. Yeah, I'll go with orange and blue. That sounds good. BTS in the bottom right. Once again, here on Citadel. In slightly different positions, but still close positions here. This time, it's BTS's main base that is uh, faced in the direction of best expansion so a little bit better for drops here for best a little bit harder for drops to go off on the side of bts now but um also mutilus play maybe not as strong i mean it seems like it's really not that far but sometimes these things can make a difference uh, if you're rallying scourge and mutas across the map and you have to go around the natural like you have to rally them out here or something and then try to send them into the main for, for that ogre zerg game play that type of thing can, can make a serious difference than just rallying straight up straight vertically right so let's see what kind of play bts wants to pull out here again 2500 zerg player even though he's not a professional uh, you know he's not a mainstay in asl or anything like that um he's got a lot of experience against these top top protoss players and he's gonna throw down a hatchery here at the third realizing that he's not gonna be able to get the natural without too much trouble here so he throws that down while in back at home from best with the forge fast expand everything looking nice and normal here as we start this next game off now i want to pay attention very closely to this gas when will bts be taking this gas geyser uh, i've been experimenting myself with some gas timings that i've seen from top tier zerg players and some of them are going very very early into that gas even three minute and 30 seconds i've seen quite often uh, be a timing that uh, allows for some really aggressive play when it comes to hydralis and early links in the leg now he does pick off that probe from best best thought he was being a sneaky little man there but bts not being fooled he sees that probe in his main tracks it down finishes it off and now best doesn't have really a way of of scouting here there's plenty of vision around his natural so bts is gonna know if another probe comes out and he's gonna be able to track that down so this is a pretty good situation as a zerg player you know there's no um damn it i i said i was going to uh Said I was going to follow this. Did I say 3 minute 30? I meant 2 minute 30. And by the way, we've got the Hydralis down on the way. <laughs> I was gonna, I said I was going to watch when this gas came up, but I ended up talking about something else. Now, we've got the Hydralis den. This is what I was talking about. You've got... It's actually more relevant. All right, guys, I didn't make a mistake. That's exactly how I meant for it to go. Anyway, we've got our lings. We've killed the probe. The Overlord is in the front of the natural. We see no probe coming out here. We know when the Zealot's coming. It's the prime time to to just go for Hydra Den. To Hydra Bust. It is exactly the right time to go for Hydra Bust. Now, we probably want to build a few extra Lings. Just in case he pushes with these Zealots. But Hydra production will start 
very, very soon. Now, plus one and Cy uh, Stargate's coming up. So, with the plus one being built here, that's going to slow down the... Oh, a double Stargate. Oh, my gosh. I think that maybe Vest's going to die here. Um, Yeah, he's not scouting at all. Going for double Stargate right now. As soon as these overlords pop, Hydras are going to be in production. We've got five already. Speed is done. Range is starting. Zealots are just chilling in the wall. Two cannons are being made. Um, I think this is the same thing as last time. He's just going to build the two cannons. And if one of them, or if the Corsair doesn't scout Hydras coming, he's going to cancel one. He sees the Hydra coming. Now he can let them finish. That's some good heads up play by Bess. He even brought a probe immediately. He had a probe waiting. Very nice. Very nice decision making here by Bess. But will it be enough? Will it be enough? Because we are going to have a lot of Hydras coming up here. And there's only two Zealots. Just two Zealots. And range is going to finish up. Leave one Hydra back at home to defend the Overlords. All the rest are going to be brought up here. Let's see if BTS can do it right now. Fourth cannon does finish. He lets it finish. Fifth cannon? Okay, he's not breaking through here anymore. I'm sorry to say. Five cannons are now done. Dude, that is that is a little bit too much. With the sixth cannon finishing, I mean... Another hatch starts. So, maybe he's not going to do this. Okay, he's gone. He's going to do this. All right, let's see how this goes. One cannon going to be targeted here. Second cannon getting low. There it goes. Third cannon does fall as well. Zealots are getting a lot of damage here, though. Jumping right on top of this. The probes have been pulled as well. I guess he can now hit the, uh, the forge, right? The forge should be killed. Yeah, that's an easy pickoff from this spot. Um, Come on, target that. Yeah, gotta get something out of this. We've still got four Zealots here. Oh, no, the Hydra. God damn it, Hydra. What are you doing? You really had to walk that close just to shoot one t just one time? Well, that's a little bit of a uh, crappy moment there. Uh, that's a Zerg moment for you. But, um... You know what? With the way that best decided to go about this right he built one sair and two stargates so i mean this stargate hasn't even built anything this game that is a big deficit that is a really big problem here for best now best is going to make a bunch of gateways and we've already got six hatches i mean six hatch almost done so there's going to be a lot of Hydras coming out here. We don't have Hive or Lair yet. There's the Lair. Lair is just now going to finish up here. But I am loving the position right now for BTS. Spire going to follow up. Very smart play by him. You always want to get that Spire. It's sometimes very hard to afford when you go for a Hydralis bust. And it doesn't, you know, outright kill. A lot of the times you still need to make units to deal with the... Corsairs and Zealots that might be running around. And um, you're trying to drone up and all that. It can be difficult to also get the Spire at the same time. But he's managed to do that. And he's on three gas. Really favoring the gas mining, my friend. BTS. Getting three gases way before I would have expected him to. 41 drones and... L Lurker aspect is on the way. He kills the Corsair. And I think the Spire was spotted. So now he's going to start making Corsairs. Realizing that, wow, we, you could actually... You, you actually could go into uh, Mutas here. And I wouldn't have the counter. Even though I have two Stargates. So good thing that best spotted that. However, we're going to have Lurkers. Not Mutas. Mutas uh, the, the Spire is just... Oh, wait. I spoke too soon. Five mutas are on the way. Now, why did he start making mutas right after the, the spire was spotted? I guess we will never know. 
Zealots gonna make their way into the third base right now. Gonna get quite a few kills. Some Zealots making their way over here towards the natural as well at the same time. So these uh, mutas really not paying off right now um, for BTS. I guess they'll end up paying off now that we can just start to kill all of these Zealots for free from the air. Uh, some of them will trade out a little bit for some Lings, but now just needing to send the drones back. We did lose quite a few, though. Maybe about five drones went down uh, in the course of that fight. Uh, more are going to be, of course, replacing those. Another base in the top right. BTS setting up for the late game here. Lurkers are coming. Uh, I didn't see Overlord Speed. And no, we don't have Overlord Speed. That could be a really big problem here. Six Corsairs coming in. Gonna trap these Mutalists. Uh, and force them to just dive onto the Templar. He gets one Templar, but every single one of those Mutalists falls. And we've got DT Drop ready to assault the main base. This is really scary right now. He's going into Hive and he doesn't have speed. Overlord speed. So if these three overlords die, it's going to get very messy here for BTS. Now, he does have a few overlords spread around right now. The DT slips into the main base. The natural doesn't have very good coverage either. This DT could get huge damage right now. Let's see it. Two kills so far. Looks like BTS pays attention though. He does chain move his Hydras to deal with that, to intercept that. But you can see the Overlord speed not being done, really harming BTS here. And he still hasn't started it, which is a little bit crazy to me. Even after the Hive is done, he starts Adrenal Glance right away. Where's my pneumatized carapace? I want to see it. Wow, this is uh, a little bit ridiculous, guys. How do we not have that upgrade coming? Triple upgrade for the ground army. Makes a lot of sense here. Best is going to try and take a third base, but at the same time, sending a drop to top right. What makes you think you can hold this base if you don't even have... Overlord speed. There's DTs on the map. That is craziness. Now, they're going to start to move out a little bit right as the drop's coming in. That's some uh, classic luck here. Uh, oh! Oh, he almost lost that. Almost lost that DT. I think now the DT will be forced up to the top right, though. Oh, come on. Build something. Did he actually see that? I think he saw the, the edge of the creep here. He's going to drop the DTs. You need a sunk, like you need a spore, man. Okay, there it is. Pneumatized Carapace finally coming in. There's the drones. They're going to be pulled away. Three killed Dark Templar. Not as much as I would have thought, but here we go. Nice job with the Scourge. That's what that Spire was for, my guys. Remember that. Um, Wow, just a lot of links coming out. <laughs> a lot of Lurkers. Dude. BTS uh, maybe throwing a little bit here. This is rough. He's going to send all the Scourge in to die. They get one kill. The uh, hatchery in the top right goes down. Oh, man. This is a, a classic Protoss moment here. Where everything for the Zerg is just going to start to fall apart. And Protoss is going to start to look completely overpowered. He's going to try and come in here. There's quite a few Lurkers ready, but maybe not enough. Where are all those Lings we saw earlier? I guess they were sent to the top right to help deal with that attack. And now, making their way back here, just to be met with big storms to the face. BTS losing the majority of his army right now, and the Dragoon number hasn't been lowered at all. Oh, well, they're right as I say it. One Dragoon falls there, but... <clears throat> That's not to say that Best Army can't still push through here. He's got so many dragoons left over. Here we go. A lot of links coming. They are that. Cr they are cracklings, guys. Do not forget that. One one cracklings are deadly. Some more hydras popping out here. There's no storm 
but the Archon being very, very helpful here. Wiping out Ling's left and right. More Ling's gonna come up. The DT is in the mix still. 14 kills now on this DT. Wow, he must have been picking off some Ling's or something off screen. He does manage to pick off that DT, but now Overlords are starting to fall. Be Best is just pushing in right now in a game that it seemed like BTS was destined to win. Best has managed to find a way to pull him apart. We saw the hints of this in that last game. The ability of Best to just keep microing with his DTs and looking for damage every which where. While, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that was for BTS. He was very excited to get into that hive, man. He really wanted that hive. Didn't even think about uh, giving his uh, overlord some air sacs, man. That pneumatized carapace certainly does help. And if you're not going to get it, I absolutely swear by just adding uh, two sunkins and a spore at your fresh base. If you're that far ahead, um, just two sunkins, one spore. You know that DTs are on the map. You're not going to be able to get overlords up there. Just, just do it. Just build it. And then you're not going to be running around dealing with all this stuff while the big army is crashing into you. You can deal, you can, you can handle your, your macro back at home. So you can get ready for this timing attack. Very well done by best. A little bit of shakiness from BTS. Let's see if he can pull it together in our next game. G -g -g game number four here. Best in the top right. BTS in the top left. We've switched up the map. It's Radeon. And close positions, no less here. It's one of those non-rotationally symmetrical maps. It's, it's symmetric, but I guess... Horizontally, vertically symmetric? What, what do you call it? it? It's like a book, right? There's a, a divide down the middle here. This side is the same as that side. They're mirrored. I'm just going to say vertically symmetric, but I honestly don't know what the difference is. Or um, not that I don't know what the difference is. Um, I don't know which one is which. So uh, maybe I'll look that up after this cast. If you know answer in the comments we're always trying to get better here always trying to improve there's always room for improvement in uh casting and the english language there's plenty of vocabulary we still have not used so you can always work on that now best another forge it is indeed another forge here 12 hatch being thrown down over at the third preemptively thinking that you know best is going to be there with the probe just assuming that best is going to scout him first i mean a little bit jaded perhaps this bts fellow thinking like well i always get scouted first so might as well just throw down that hatch over at the third anyway but he's gonna he would have been wrong it's not going to hurt him that much, though. It would have been quite painful if there was, like, a double gateway or something here. Uh, that can be a potentially game-losing situation when you have to put your extra hatchery over at this base rather than here at the natural. Blink quite a few drones right now. There's a cannon rush coming <laughs> over at this base. How did he find out about this? BTS, are you a map hacker? How did he know about this uh, cannon rush over here? That is um, that is something else. Well, we won't accuse him just yet. Maybe he saw the, the second probe got a little too near the hatchery or something like that. I'm not sure. But uh, that's, that's a little bit funny. That's a little bit suspicious there, BTS. I'm watching you, bud. That third hatch will come down here and two links hit the field. It looks like we're going to go up to six. A little bit premature here. 
I'm not even the gateway finished yet. A lot of times, just the two lings are gonna be fine. Yeah, this is this is a little. This is quite a few lings. We don't need this many, just to chase the probe. Um, the accepted, understood amount of lings that you generally will build is you build two lings to chase the early probe, and then. Uh, of course, you need more if... Oh, he's up to eight now. Uh, you need more if they build a pylon. You need four to stop the pylon from building. But... Uh, usually, you build two to four, and then you wait for the second overlord to pop. And against the forge fast expand, this first zealot will come out about the same time as your uh, overlord, your second overlord. And at that point point you can start to pump lings again now i think we got overload we got supply blocks or something he built two overlords sometimes this honestly happens to me too um where i go to build one overlord and i accidentally build two in the early game and it really screws you over hard so it feels like something went wrong it really feels like something's off here for bts like I played enough Zerg, I played enough bad games of Zerg <laughs> that I know when something looks wrong and I feel like we've had a mishap here. The gas felt like it was taken very, very early. Um, we built eight Lings and we went Hydroden with two Overlords. This just nothing looks right with another hatch here, no less. Four hatch Hydra going to be the choice here. I think he's not actually going to build Hydras to try and kill. I think he's going to build to defend his overlords. I think that's what we're going to see. Uh, I'm not 100% on that, but I feel like in this circumstance, there's almost no way. There's almost no way you can kill because things are just off. You, you have to be very precise with your Hydra timing if you are actually going to go for a bust. Uh, nothing can go wrong. Or the Protoss will hold. Especially a good Protoss like Best. So, he's gonna come out with the Hydras. He's gonna try to threaten. I don't think the Best is even gonna build any extra cannons here. He's already got three. He's gonna try to sneak out a Zealot. That's not gonna work. He's gonna lose that for free, it looks like. Yeah, that's gonna go down. Alright, one Ling. Gets traded. Just one Hydra back at home and just full on droning. So this is kind of what I expected. One extra cannon here. He does does want to be a little bit safe, you know. Four hatch. Five hatch now. Six hatch going to be on the way here shortly. Goes after the cannon. He actually gets that cannon. Can he get the second cannon here at the front? He's going to go after the... Okay, he's going to go after the cannon. Get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. He gets the cannon. But overlords back at home are not being protected here. Three, four, five overlords could go down all at the same time. And you know what? If these overlords fall, um, he could get so badly supply blocked that he can't produce anything to deal with four zealots. We might see four zealots almost end the game here, guys. That's how bad this can get. BTS really went ham with his drone production. And okay, the zealots are going to head back home. But that looked a little bit scary. Like, look, we're at 41 of 21, and we've got three Hydras. All right, a few more did pop out, so he's going to be okay. He's going to be all right here. BTS going to stabilize. He didn't kill the Forge, though. No kill on the Forge, which is what he was gunning for. That's what he was going for in that attack. And he lost some Overlords. So I would put Best at a pretty serious advantage here, although he has managed to slip out a lot of drones. His Hydra positioning is not looking too, too bad. Things are going to get messy, though. He's going to have to go for the ramp. Drones being pulled here might be able to save the Hydras, but they won't save the Overlords. The Overlords are going to be the target right now. A few drones are going to be targeted as well. Zealots will not make their way into the main, but oh my gosh, how many kills on these Corsairs. Seven kill Corsair right there, guys. Absolutely insane. A few Corsairs did fall, 
but that is so painful. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it, guys. It's so bad. It's so, so bad. That's 700 minerals that one Corsair cost. Um, not that it costs the best, that it costs to BTS here. Do you have a DT out? Not quite yet, but we should have one soon, I think. Overlord speed here. Going to be researched before the hive this time. So maybe BTS um, learning from his mistake. Perhaps. Drop on the way. Mm. No third gas right into drop. You cannot afford lurker here. Okay, he <laughs> starts lurker upgrade anyway. You, I was going to say, you can't afford lurker. You can't afford lurker with two gas. Uh, even without buying drop. But now he just spent an extra 200 on drop as well. I don't think he can even afford much hydro production. Right? He's going to build a lot of drones and try to get up to you know, 40, 50 drones here. And then I think what we're going to see is a huge hydra drop with lurker defense at home. To try and deal with the counter attack. I think that's the plan here. <laughs> Zealot, uh, Ling speed here on the way right now, by the way. We didn't get that upgrade yet, so maybe that was us saving gas. Uh, for these other upgrades. These, uh, certainly more important upgrades. I'm just waiting for the Corsairs. Can't be losing any more of them, I tell you. I, I tell you what, we, we need those for drops. And usually... Uh, during a drop, you're going to end up losing a lot of your overlords anyway. So, yeah, we really uh, need to be careful with those right now. Um, let's see if we can pick off the Corsairs. Making some lurkers here now. If you can kill the Corsairs. Oh, he gets one. The drop becomes way more powerful if you can kill the Corsairs here. Now, Lurkers are being made. He's going to come across the map now. But Best already has a pretty good fighting force. I don't think Drop is going to be useful here. We're going to try to contain this area, I think. Oh, he just picked up. He just picked up a Hydra and revealed his entire strategy to Best, who's just going to shove forward here. These Lurkers are certainly not in a good position and... BTS is going to have to respond by running away here. Missing a macro round back at home. Uh, Hydras are being stormed. Couple of Templar do get sniped, but now the Dragoon number is way too high. Yeah, this is... Um, <laughs> this is a bit rough, guys. This is really feeling like some of the games that I play. Where you've got the, uh, the Hydra bus going... But the Protoss is a little bit too good at killing Overlords. Um, multitasking quite a bit better in this game for Best than it was for BTS. Showing some cracks here in his gameplay. Now running forward here with some Lings. Can get on top of this army. Maybe going to kill off a lot of these Dragoons. I don't see any Storm left. The Ling at Flood actually with the Hydras managing to clear everything out. Well done. Only four Dragoons left back at home. Oh, there was a drop. A drop in the natural went off and I missed it. I will picture and picture that for you guys. So that we don't miss any of the action. I feel like a few drone or a few probes were killed. I'm not sure how many. But can he hold on against this counter attack here? Zealot Dragoon is all that Best has, and he loses his first observer. Uh, one observer remains. All the overlords died in that fight, so he can shove everything back, no problem. Um, observer will get home scot-free. And, hmm. Well, this is an interesting game now, because we've lost our, our whole army from Best. And I guess I was wrong about drops being useful. That was pretty useful, at least at killing some probes and 
throwing Best off a little bit. It seemed like he wasn't controlling his army in that one fight. That uh, BTS was able to get the surround with the Lings and Hydras and clear up a lot of it. So now maybe we can take a base and stretch this game out on either side. Third base here for Best. Fourth base here for BTS. We'll see if uh, either player can hold his base. Another Lurker drop going to be loaded up here. There was a Corsair in the way of this drop. So we'll see if he can get into position to deal with that. Spreading out the Lurkers. Not quite spread enough, I'm, I'm afraid. But maybe he can get up here in this choked up area while this drop is going on. Now, Bass is going to pull everything back to deal with this. So, you know, maybe we can run up and kill some some Templar. Oh, two Templar do go down. Nicely done, but good job on Bess making an Archon in the middle of that chaos. Keeping at least one of his Templar from getting sniped there. A bunch of Lurkers are going to be made. Right on top of the Lurkers. The eggs right on top of the Lurkers. Um, not really the best because you can just storm... Kill all the Lurkers and all the eggs, which is insane value. Um, he might end up going for that. Pushing forward here with a lot of Dragoons. Lurkers are getting some good value against these Zealots, but Storms have been pretty decent as well. I'll zoom out so we can see this whole fight here. Gonna rotate around this bottom side right now. Do we have anything over here? Not at all. BTS needs to rotate here. And you know, right as we're backing up, we could back up into take killing this base here as best. But instead, he's gonna rotate to the north. Make sure that he can secure his supply train here. His extra army. Uh, his reinforcement line coming down here. Some of those Templar are gonna get picked. And... One is forced to be made into a uh, Archon. So that was pretty good pickoffs for BTS, but still struggling right now. Whereas, you know, Best is just macroing like crazy. Oh, another drop here. Trying to get some more kills with these Lurkers. I have to be a little bit mindful with my um, picture in picture here for this game so many drops going on that i might have missed now lurkers being sieged up here right on top of each other this is a prime location for a storm right here and there it is he does whip that down a lot of damage from that but it appears that bts will hold on once again really incredible play from him getting the drops off while defending these attacks and I mean, he's not getting his fourth base mining just yet, but I think now is the time. Now is the opportunity here for BTS to maybe make a comeback, to maybe find a way to, you know, get this fourth base online and perhaps try to snipe this third. Let's see what he can pull off. He's going to make a bunch more lurkers and he is going to run in here right as the overlord has been revealed look at that Bess is running back in order to deal with that drop and now the lurker and hydra army gonna run forward here try to do as much damage as they can to kill both the cannons Ser flying around the bottom side of the map looking for expansions he will eventually find this and i think we're gonna see him do it again Best being multi-taxed and is multitasking right now. He's got to deal with both of these at the same time. This army over here and this drop. Lurker is just slowly pushing up here. He's going to lift. Maybe to drop a Lurker back here or something. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe he wants to go for the main with that drop. Could be a good move as well. Looks like Best wants to head out on the map. Going to send a group of Zealots down towards that fourth base. Oh, picking up the Lurker once again. Here's another drop. This Lurker with no kills, unfortunately. Another Lurker drop here in the main. Trying to get fancy right now. Let's see if we can get some kills. Looks like not going to be able to. And that Lurker will fall. 
in short order. Zalots heading over here towards this fourth base. But can they get the kill on the hatchery? It seems like they won't be able to. Hyde just going to run forward here. Trying to get on top of this third right now. Zalots will be baited into the spines. What are our upgrades looking like? 2-1 for BTS 2-2 two, two. over here on best finally the Corsair does go down zealots are going to be chased away hydras and lurkers fighting here at the bridge pretty tough to get across this bridge right now but with a few well-placed storms and dragoons picking off oh nice snipe on the observer observers always a problem for the protoss Never can have enough of them. And Bess is starting to run out of money, guys. He really is. He's got one base mining here. Um, this is just about to run out, though. And this is, yeah, pretty far gone at this point. So, BTS is doing a good job on lair attack, forcing Bess back right now. Zealots are going to make their way over here, though. This is bad. If we lose this base, we could lose this game really, really quickly. Hydra's going to come down here. He has to make sure that this does not die. We'll keep an eye on that while watching this fight here in the middle of the map. It's like Dragoons and Zealots will push their way out here. The hatchery has been saved. He's going to take this opportunity to perhaps clear some of these lurkers that have been set up. A good move here by Best, causing some chaos on the map with the zealot run by and utilizing the opportunities uh, presented to dive in here oh really good move here by bts though you see how he brought the overlord forward he knew that the observers would be coming across while the army had to come ar go around so he brings forward the hydras with the overlord to snipe the uh, observers really really good thought process there from BTS and now he's going to be shoving forward even more with a lot of Hydras and Lurkers. Can he get in here and prevent Best from pushing out? Uh, I think that's his plan right now. I don't think he's actually going to hope to break the three base Protoss player. I think he just needs to withstand and weather the Protoss uh, moving forward. Keep taking these fights. Don't allow Zealots out and try to get another base. Slowly try to add another base. And I don't think you even add drones here. He's already at 47. I think you just send drones. Like, you take this base and you just send these drones at the natural. Or like half the drones at the hat natural and all of the drones at the main. And just, just get that base rolling and keep the production going. Four base is all you need here. Truly. To overwhelm the one base Protoss. So it's like Best gonna try and break out of here. The lurkers are gonna be the main focus of this fight. If he can snipe the observer just once or twice, he could have a really good chance of taking this fight, but or of holding Best in his base, but he doesn't manage to snipe the, the observer, and now it's just pure Hydra versus Dragoon with a few storms mixed in. And yeah, there's just not quite enough hydras here. He does have a lot on the back burner right now. And he is pushing in, trying to create another opportunity here. This is not a drop. I thought maybe that was another drop, but no. More Hydras down here as well. He needs to bring everything together if he wants to take this fight, but kind of missing out on quite a bit of his army supply. Having it in the background here. Oh, he's gonna go for the Templar. Can he get this snipe? Oh, he's stormed his own observer there. And there's so many Hydras coming forward. I think that BTS can hold this. He can at least force the dragons back, if not kill a bunch of them. So he gets uh, like three, four kills on the, the backside there, on the retreat. He found his hydras down here. He's transferring these drones. This is a bit of a moment of weakness here for BTS. He's going to be missing out on some hydra rallies as he's transferring those drones and getting that fourth base up and running once again. Hydras on the right hand side, eating a big storm. A secondary storm goes down to try and finish them off, but there's too many Hydras here on the left-hand side that are chewing through that flank. And the flank of Best gets chewed indeed. Best gonna run home 
put some salve on that that bitten flank there. Transferring those probes down. That seems a bit late. We need to get this the the probes over here a little bit quicker. Because we are running on one base mining now. That is it, man. Best has to do it right now. He's got to build up one last army and push his way out here on the map. Or BTS is just going to take it, dude. He's got so many Hydras here. Not a lot of Lurkers. But he's going to do this counterattack again. The moment that Best starts to push out and make some, some space, make some gains here on the map, another counterattack is going to come in. Lurkers are going to be in the way, so it forces the Zealots and Dragoons to run into them. These Lurkers are getting so much damage right now. They will get picked off, but this position has been opened up once again. It's hard to leave here uh, without cannons. So he's going to have to build two more cannons, and that's another 300 minerals down the drain. He doesn't have a lot of those left to spare. He's going to wait for the cannons to finish, and then uh, by the time those are done and he starts to push out again... The army is going to be huge for BTS one more time. He's pushing forward here uh, with just a smaller army trying to pick off some of the morphing lurkers. Oh my god, the storms though. Those are some nasty, nasty storms. Now, the storms were great, but the Dragoon number is not enough to win the day here. So, all the Dragoons go down and now the Dragoon number has been almost completely reset once again. Dragoon Force is coming forward here. Okay, this is the moment here. Best has managed to take just a shred of map control here. He's forced BTS back for a moment, but that moment will not last. We need to make some headway somewhere. We need to either take a base or kill BTS right here, right now. Good storm there in the center of these Hydras, but... Where are the other Templar here? There's that Templar. Good split. Very, very nice split, though, from BTS. And this is a majority Hydra army against a majority Archon army. So the Archons are going to get lit up now. Templar falling. Hydras chasing. Everything going down right now as Zealots, only a few of them remain to be macroed out right now. Great job with the small round of hydras making their way to the front they're gonna kill that archon they force the storms as well zealots on a mission here to try and kill something they're gonna be sent down here to the bottom left hand corner a dt is being made maybe that's the problem here for best he never made that critical dt which came in so handy in the last games Hydra's here. Going to be fighting with the drones. A lot of acid spit being sent all over these zealots. A few lurkers being made just to block. Create a bit of a wall here. Quite a few drones went down, but it's a drop in the bucket right now for best. He needs to do so much more bailing if he wants this ship to stay afloat. We got more lurkers being loaded up here. Can't even produce hydras off of everything because we're literally on two bases now. 40 drones on two bases. I mean, it's not optimal, but hey, we'll we'll take what we can get. Um, time to start transferring these drones, actually. And send those to mine minerals or to mine off of fresh gases because just mining two gas at a time. It's fine if you've got, you know, 11 bases and everything's fully saturated. That's fine. But in this case, uh, things are this low money. It, uh, it can be a really big problem. So we're going to go to work with the DT here while the army's going... Uh, while, the, while the fight's going on in the middle of the map. And this could actually bring uh, Best back into this game. Oh my god, the Hydra's got stuck there. That is so brutal. 11 drones have been killed now. 12, 13, 14. Massacre. Absolute massacre here. And <laughs> it's so funny that I, I I absolutely called it that best he needed to make a DT 
Um, and he lost it, or he was losing the game because he didn't make that DT. Well, he made the DT now. And as funny as it is, I think he... Oh, God. A lot of kills on these lurkers. Wow. Getting a ton of damage here. Oh, 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 oh. He sent it back too early. Oh, 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 oh. oh my God. Seven probes remain. All right. Well, best. I, <laughs> I think he just threw his chances. Dude, what is this game right now? What in... What... Why? Why why is it like this? Why is Brood War like this, guys? Oh, we've got a consummate professional here in best. And he just cannot pull his probes away for long enough. He lets every probe die, sending them back too early. He did so much damage with the DT, it looked like he actually might win. And with his army, I, there's still a shot. There's still a chance, maybe. Just snipe the, snipe the. Oh, oh, okay. He can't, he can't go for it right now. He does use. I think he targeted there with the, maybe one of the the lurkers to get that extra templar kill. I'm not sure. But the templar did die. Looks like counterattack may be imminent. Um, what are we? Are we serious? <laughs> what is happening? Oh, we're just gonna base trade? Um, I don't know if this goes well for... Like, we've got... S we're trading a base that had, f like, five probes. For our base that had, like, 20 or 30 probes. Or 30 drones. I am shocked that this is the way that, um... That BTS wanted to do this. This is so silly. Oh god, we're gonna start long distance mining here. We got 12 drones left. I really don't know how this is gonna end, guys. This is uh this is kind of insane. We've got one high templar. Two high templar. Three high templar. No pro we got one probe. And a dream, guys. This guy's got how many how many storms left? He's got 200 energy. He never got the kite the amulet, so. Only two storms on that. Um, nobody's making anything. Here comes that army. That's a lot of hide. I think we've got it here. The Zerg's got it. He's got the definitely the supply advantage, but again, we've got no probes, so that can be misleading. Um, not gonna be able to push through there. I think all. I honestly, I think this is. This is the most important unit in the game right now. If we snipe that, if the pro, if the Zerg player snipes that, it's over. Get it? Yeah, he got it. All right, is there another observer anywhere? Yeah, I don't see it. Yep, I think we did it. That that's dirty, guys. That is that is the way she goes. Oh, one more is being built. One more observer. Could we possibly maybe even a little bit win this game? Is it, is it, I mean, I think that even if he got the most legendary storms imaginable, I don't think we could, could take this one, but let's see what best does here. Let's just throw down, let's, let's go for it. Come on, best. He's got three Templar, He's got like five storms. There we go, one. Two. Come on, baby. We can't lose the observer. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Another lurker there. That hasn't been stormed yet. How many storms we got left? We got two. Two storms only. It's a very low HP uh, Templar there. Storm? No. He lost the storm. All right, GG. Best. Playing a bit of impossible scenarios there at the end, but he didn't quite manage to pull it together. So I guess that was the right call. Hey, I thought that that was a terrible call uh, at first by BTS. You know, trading, going for this base. There was only five probes um, and letting his bases go down. Uh, it seemed like a bad idea to me, but he made it work. So, I mean, 
props to him for going through such a nightmarish, crazy uh, game here and coming out on top. You, that's definitely one of those games where you're like, dude, if I lost that, I would have been pissed. Because <laughs> we just went 30, you know, 32 minutes. Sometimes I, I'm going, uh, I'm more thinking of games where, you know, it goes to like almost an hour um, and it gets really down and dirty. And when you, uh, you know, take it that far, it's like, man, I better win this game. <laughs> I better win this game. We're going to go this far. Uh, I could have tapped out a long time ago if not. But there it is, guys. Another win for BTS. And we're going to jump into game number, what is this, five, six? I think it's game number five. Don't quote me on that, though. Here we go. Game number five it is. We've got best here over in the bottom left and bts in the bottom right now apocalypse a great map a very interesting map when it comes to pvz because we have these high ground areas these plateau areas and three of them at that plus it's a three player map i think three player maps don't get enough love three player maps are pretty darn interesting when it comes to professional play sometimes um i get frustrated with them myself i'm uh, playing on ladder but i think they're pretty what two probes okay we're gonna see a potential um cannon rush here well maybe he was thinking about doing it but there's actually a spawning pool on the way so that's not gonna be a thing it's a uh, i believe a nine pool yeah, looking like a nine pool here with the extractor trick. So, <clears throat> that's not going to happen. He will have to build the, the cannon like right, right now. So, he does run back and go ahead, drop that cannon. Might even drop a second one. Yeah, I think that's the prudent thing to do. That's the smart choice here. Pulling the probes back. That secondary probe that was sent out. Not finding anything over here at the top. And uh, yeah, just a few links being made here for BTS. He's not sending them straight across the map or anything. He sees the cannon. He knows that he forced two cannons and uh, I think that's going to be enough for him. Well, just as I say that. One of the cannons did get cancelled, so best optimizing, optimizing, optimizing here. Will he come to regret that decision, though? Six lings are headed directly towards his base. There's that gas timing. And we could see a run by here, although with the probes in the wall, it's a little bit less likely. Still, you can run up, kill a probe, and then try to run by. Uh, here we go, running by. Oh, the pro blocking is so good. Best, you monster. You absolute monstrous human. Blocking these probes like it was nothing. And now he's gonna try and chase them down. It's the, the Zergling's time to run away from the probes. It's not the sight that you expect to see in this matchup, but you do want to keep this Ling alive, at least until it regains like half HP. You don't want to lose these too quickly because two Lings in the main can deal a lot of damage. You can force out a lot of things and it can give you a lot of scouting information. One Ling is a lot worse than two Lings when it comes to killing any probes. So he's got to run around for a little bit longer. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Okay, BTS. A little bit busy with something back at home. Did end up losing that. Um, so now just one ling running around. That's, this is going to be more for scouting. You'll eventually sack it in to try and kill a probe or whatever, but does want to see, you know, what's the timing of the... Oh, 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 one probe. No, not going to get it. What's the timing of the uh, Stargate here? Has it been... Can we slow it down at all? Can we do anything here to slow down best? Probably not. But, um, actually this, yeah, maybe a little bit slow. Hey, look at that. The Stargate just a tiny bit slow here. And Hydralis are coming. One probe out on the map. 
We do have some lings ready to stop that. We actually went for speed first, and then we went to hydrolis speed. So, oh, no, 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 you can't let that by. Oh, gosh, okay, jump on that, jump on that. He's got to get this, he's got to kill this. Get it. Oh, very good stuff. Very, very good stuff here Um, from BTS. That link speed coming in really handy there. So, he managed to block the scout, and Hydras are going to be on the way now. Hydras are going to be sent across the map. We'll see what he can get done here. This is a vertical wall this time. A lot easier to break through these walls than the horizontal that we've seen the past couple of times with the Hydralis bust, right? So, let's see if we can make this work here. First Corsair is about to pop. We'll get the information here right away. Two Overlords here at the front, though, so it's not like he's going to be able to kill the Overlord and deny with the DT. Let's start to hit the first Overlord. He might hide the Hydras here for a moment and then send it in. No, he's just going to send it immediately. Make sure he can keep that uh, alive. Secondary Cannon is coming up. We do have four Zealots. So, still a significant force to try and defend this uh, this first cannon. Gonna run up here and do it. I think he's gonna go for it here. Where is that Sare? It's hanging out in the main base right now. Drones are popping. So, he does have a follow-up for this. Running straight up. Very nicely done, Hydra Bus there. Really, really good run forward by those Hydras to get in range of the cannon right away. Kind of getting a few pot shots, but we're still pretty good on the Hydra number. I think he's going to pull back Hydras. Yeah, this is a really good choice, actually. Send these Hydras home and bring fresh Hydras uh, to the front. So those three Hydras that are really badly damaged, bring them back. This is similar to like the, the thing with the Mutas, right? We rarely ever see Zerg players do this uh, with Hydra, but... It's become way more of a common thing to pull back your mutas uh, after they've been damaged to let them heal up a bit. Uh, doing the same thing here, but with a new twist. I like it. And he's even going to be able to get in range of this forge here. Can he kill it? I don't think he can get it in time, although it is getting quite close. Okay, the fourth hide is on there. He will get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's got this 100% now. Nice. Oh, this has gone really, really well. This has gone really, really well for him. And and he didn't take any damage from the Corsair either. It looks like the Corsair might have died. Am I seeing that right? Did Best really lose the Corsair? Oh, boy. Well, that's really not good. Um, the Hydras here, they are healing back up. Overlord's going to head home. One more Corsair being made, but... He can't even just kill this, the overlords that are leaving right now. These overlords are probably going to be able to make their way back to the natural. Um, well, at least one of them, I think, might be might be able to. Full on Hydro's production here. We've got plus uh, weapons coming up. Zergling are being made. Zerglings. And that's really, really smart right now from BDS because there's no plus one. No plus one. So these Zerglings are going to be really useful. I'm going to body block and eat a lot of the damage from the Zealots. And that means that um, we can do more things with our gas. If we're making a lot of lings right now, that frees us up to do some things with uh, with the gas that we're we're mining right now. We don't have fourth uh, third gas just yet. Just the, just the two. So uh, a Spire is going to come up. Looks like he might be able to save this. Can he get over here and save this Overlord? No. Overlord will fall. Slight uh, minor supply block here. I say minor, but almost a thousand minerals in the bank. Um, this is, It's kind of minor because we're not actually in desperate need of a round of units or anything like that. We're going to pop some drones here soon. Uh, and the Overlords, I mean seven of them on the way right now. That's pretty rough. Uh, another four drones in production. And he will open up that supply now. Ten more drones coming out. Wow. Dude, that's a lot of lings, man. You don't usually see that many lings at this time. 
pretty cool composition here from BTS. Really heads up play considering how the matchup's gone so far. Um, you rarely see, you know, Mass Ling this early. Uh, and now switching into Muta as well. I really like BTS's play, man. I think that he's he's got some got some of the special sauce, man. He's got that uh, that killer instinct. I feel like. Maybe he's not as good at uh, the multitasking. Oh, DT is here. Yikes. DT is going to work in the main. Looks like they've got two kills and one kill. All told, two kills and two kills, something like that. Three. So the drop pretty successful. Still no overload speed. Again, no overload speed. Pretty funny. Um, repeating those errors here after getting a win. Um, going back to the old ways, I suppose. Does end up finishing that off. Seven more drones in production, so we will get back into that high drone count. No plus upgrades just yet, and plus one one is about to finish here for best. So he's got a pretty big timing with his Dragoon, Zealots, um, and Templar. Their upgrades all being finished. Maybe he can come out here and put the hurt on BTS, but pretty soon BTS is going to have Hive. And he's going into up like triple upgrades, so he's gonna have the melee armor and attack, and the uh, range attack as well. Very very soon, killing off some probes here. Pretty good harassment from BTS, but can he handle this big army? That's really the scary thing right now. The big army is going to take a lot of ground units to deal with. And he just burst up to 56 drones. Which means he hasn't really been making a lot of... Oh! Snipes on the Templar. He gets one. Probably not the snipes that he was looking for. We've still got, what, six storms left? Oh, man. And this fourth base is really exposed. Can he get in here? A lot of links coming forward. The Zealots do have that plus one now, so they're going to rip through Ling's pretty darn quick now. Um, holding control over this. He's going to send two Zealots over towards this fourth, and he sees it now. Oh, dude. BTS is going to be forced to make a move right now. He doesn't really have a choice. Like He would like to just sit back, but you kind of have to save this base, don't you? Oh, that's so many drones, man. Oh, every single drone going down. Well, he's still got 46. So I guess, it's, you know, game's not over yet. Adrenal, gla Adrenal glands is finishing up. Um, Ling's making a counterattack play. We're going to go after this Templar. Might be able to get that. That's a good uh, snipe there. Can't get anything more, though. Uh, still gonna wait for... Oh, armor. Armor did finish. So now he can actually fight it once again with the Zealots. With the uh, Adrenal coming up, though, soon. You don't want to fight uh, too early here. Wait for that Adrenal upgrade to finish. Um, a lot of army is coming back right now. Maybe this is the moment for BTS to move on to the high ground. It looks like he's been given a brief reprieve here. He might be able to come up onto the high ground. He spots that... Okay, you're not uh, you're not holding my high ground anymore, so maybe I can come up. Scourge and Ling's here in the main. Uh, dropship gonna make its way in here. Um, I think he just spotted it. Is he gonna see it here? Oh, he's gonna send in the the scourge. Oh, the scourge, please use the scourge for the uh, for the dropship here. Oh man, that's a little bit rough. Well, Zealots are going to go to work in the main base here. While this army is coming up this high ground, BTS not paying attention right now. He's going to get a big storm. Huge storm on a lot of these lurkers. Wow, five lurkers just get destroyed here. While Zealots are wreaking havoc in the main. Looks like that's been cleaned. But once again, we're in this position again where lurkers are not on the high ground. Dude, BTS messed this up, man. He really messed this up. I hate to say it, but that was the moment. You needed to take the high ground here. Um, not let Best have that back, snaz that back, steal that back, 
if he'd gone for the the dropship with the uh, scourge as well things would have gone a lot better here plague is on the way a counter tech is going on right now but oh this is the type of thing that makes you feel like protoss is so broken one storm and two three cannons kill you know 24 lings pretty darn rough um and here we go another round of lings gonna make their way over here he's really trying his best to win with lings right now but he needs something more a dark swarm comes down he will have enough for another dark swarm here gonna go ahead and shove forward with those links he's gonna get a free archon under this uh dark swarm here uh plague is just about done but zealots are coming up on mass right now he's got one more dark swarm i think he's gonna throw it down here he really needs that uh the the lurkers here to live a little bit longer to kill all these zealots he's bringing forward some more lings the defilers still alive somehow but all of the lurkers are gone from underneath here the zealots are enough to do it and now the drones are getting absolutely ravaged oh my god i accidentally showed you guys the screen but hey it is what it is it's the end of the game you knew it i knew it 17 drones were left i noticed that i got rid of that by accident how do I? There. There we go. That's the one. That's the button. All right. That's it, guys. He gets taken down. I really feel like there was a moment here where BTS could have brought things back in a big way. Like, right when he forced the army back. Right when he forced the army back here. He had a really good chance. Uh, to, to end up winning this game But he sent his lurkers up and then didn't pay attention to them uh, This is this is really rough. I Guess it was like right around here. Was it? Oh, this is actually too early. So he gets pushed back here. This is fine. He does lose the, the extra base of course but You can't you can't really push up into this pushing up into this is kind of like a it's a it's it's too rough. You're gonna lose too much. Right here. It was it wasn't a long gap in time. But for a moment, Best left this high ground. So right here, Best left the high ground. The Lynx did their job. They forced things uh they forced him out of position. He sent the Zell or he sent the Ling up, and he saw that it was clear. And I think you have to unburrow everything. Unburrow everything and just take this position here. You have to take this. And he sent like one group, but look at his other groups of lurkers here. They're just not moving. They're not moving because I think he might have seen this. Something was missing here. There's just that one tiny moment. And that's the thing, guys. At this high a level of play, you're not going to get more than just one moment to uh, to make the right decision. Because the other player is playing so damn quick, they're going to fill in those gaps before you have a chance to execute if you're taking too long. So, best moved, he made that decision to pull everything back and he left that opening. But BTS not quick enough. Look at this. All these lurkers. If he had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lurkers spread here. With one, two, three, four, five, six lurkers here. There's no way this army gets up there. And by that token, this base can live, right? We can we hold this area. If best tries to run around, we bring more stuff down there. This four zealots in the main is not that big of a concern, right? The big concern here is this army taking our high ground away. That's unfortunate that game five ends up going that way. I think it was a pretty decent showing by BTS, but uh, best just uh, just hanging in there, man. He's, he's definitely putting out some great games. We'll jump into our last game now, guys. Game number six that's coming right up. Back on to Citadel for our last game. Guys, thank you so much for joining me in this little series here. 
Um, I know it's not the biggest names. It's not the, you know, Soul Key or Queen or Action or whatever that you might be used to on the channel. But BTS, as you can see, has put out some great games. He's an interesting player and um, yeah. I thought this was a very fun series. So if you did uh, think so as well, let me know down below. Leave a like. Definitely helps me out. So here we are on Citadel once again. Will it be Forge expansion from best? He really hasn't deviated from that throughout this entire series. He's been really clear that this is the style he wants to go with. And BTS, for the most part, hasn't really been able to punish it. But here we go. A switch up in our last game. Gateway first. Here out of best. And looks like a 12 hatch. Going to come for BTS. And luckily for him, he will not be denied. Unluckily for him, though, this is close spawn. So this zealot will make its way to this natural very, very quickly. Uh, not saying that it's going to necessarily kill any drones or anything, but if it kills even one drone, it's almost like you... It, it's like you might as well have just gone for a nine pool instead or a, an over pool instead in terms of your macro advantage. It's really going to erase the macro advantage of taking the, the 12 hatch here. So we'll just keep that in mind as the first zealot increments out. Sent straight across the map here. Towards that bottom left. We'll see what kind of micro can be pulled out here by BTS. And is this drone not mining? Oh, man. Well, maybe uh, Best will get in here and force some of the drones to move around. And maybe he'll get this drone mining again. Oh, my gosh. BTS just not having a lot of luck in some of these games. So some of the things just seriously not going his way. There we go. Okay, he moved it. So, finally, those, these will actually get back to mining. Great micro here. Oh, he just barely doesn't pull that back, though. That was really, really close. So, he did lose a drone. So, again, might as well have gone with the overpool, but it's fine. It's a uh, an even game at this point with the um, early lings being sent out across the map. He should be able to put on some pressure. He's just going to leave that zealot there, head across towards this... Uh, this gateway, leave probably these four Zel uh, four Zerglings back at home. He's building a lot of Lings right now. Going for a gas as well. Uh, the Zealot is going to be sent back home. Realizing that he really does need some help back here. He's going to start a shield battery. And BTS, he is seriously going to put on the pressure here. A probe out in the front could be targeted. It doesn't get targeted, but the gateway is going down rapidly right now. Probe coming from behind. Zealot there as well. These four lings are going to keep hitting the gateway while the other lings start to fight the probes and zealots. He's going to run in. Killing that one probe will probably run by. There we go. Gets another couple of probes. Pretty good stuff here from BTS. Getting the gateway. Killing the probes. I mean, that is a lot of damage. And the main point here that I want to drive home in your guys heads is we do not have a cybernetic score so that is why killing the gateway here is actually super worth right now even though a lot of links were traded a lot of uh, the drone saturation has been slowed down we just killed the Protoss timing here the Protoss timing we're going to see when that first Corsair comes out I'd venture to guess it's going to be around like seven minutes, something like that. And we're going for a Hydra bus as well. This is very well thought out from BTS. You guys can see the caliber of play coming here. Uh, the, the 
on the ball thinking like the really well thought out timings here and heads up plays from bts are nothing to sneeze at guys there's a probe heading over towards bts's base he's got to deny this and he doesn't have ling speed so scary moment here if he doesn't deny this best is gonna know and things are gonna get a little hectic he sees the lings and he didn't see the extra hatch there's the extra hatch now he's gonna instead transfer over here towards the top left there's a lot of drones this is not 973 this looks to be more of just a hydra follow-up he sees how many drones are here over at the third and i think that uh bess is gonna realize the same sort of thing there's the stargate it's coming up not even uh, it's six minutes we're not even done the stargate yet so uh if you guys don't know if you go for the forge fast expand the earliest you can really get that most players will get the stargate is five minute 30. um if you're doing something like a gateway it's usually six to six minute 30. and look at this zealots running around the map he's gonna counter attack into the third while this Hydra attack is hitting his front, how is this going to go? I think a lot of drones might end up dying, but maybe he can break the front right now. Oh, this is going to be wacky. This is going to be wild, guys. Here we go. Hydra's getting ready. They do not have range. No range here. And the four Zealots make their way into the base. They're going to chase these drones for a moment, but here we go. He pulls the trigger. He's just going to surround and shoot down the... Zealots immediately going after the cannons now. Some links are attacking the probes, but a lot of them are just running around in circles here because they can't target the probes. They do not have priority over these cannons. So the cannons doing their job. The hatchery is getting low. This is almost certainly a best advantage now. Second hatchery is still there. So, I mean, we can still mine from this base, albeit not with the highest efficiency level. Uh, it's still possible to mine here. And we've got 29 workers. We're not totally out of the water right now. We're not totally screwed at this point. We have some ways to continue this game. He's even going to add another hatch here. And 10 more drones on the way. Plus one attack. Best. Five cannons at the front. He's ready for the follow-up Hydra bus, but I don't think that's what's coming. Citadel. Templar Archives coming up here. The Hydras make their way to the front. And he can actually hit the forge from this position. This is very nice stuff. All right, going to get just barely in range here. Hit the uh, forge and the gateway. There's only three zealots and three more zealots about to pop. Can he bring enough zealots to bear to break this? I don't think so. Oh, the upgrade is so close right now. It's so close. Are we going to get it? Oh, okay. The zealots coming out for one second. He does buy enough time. Plus one is done. And now best has that upgrade. He can continue on this game uh, without worrying about like mass ling hitting him again this last time that was very powerful it was a great play from bts unfortunately he didn't execute it properly but um he's not really able to do that this game he can't just go mass ling and hope that they're gonna fight against these plus one zealots he has to play the traditional method here with mass hydra and potentially going into lurker or um, mutalisk i think it's just going to be pure hydra though just as many hydras as you've ever seen in your life now zealots are going to make their way around and they are going to counter attack into the third base while i mean bts is just not ready he is just not ready for this Zealots running in here towards the main as well. Those will get cleaned up, no problem. But I think he can potentially target down drones here or maybe go for the hatchery. Well, he goes for drones and they get pulled. So I think BTS is handling this about as well as you could ever imagine. That was a perfect drone drill, by the way. 
That drone drill was insanely good. And he's going to handle all these zealots without losing too many drones. He's at 45 drones now. And he just killed every army unit from best. So BTS looking really good now. Looking very, very good in this game. We're going to grab armor as well. Lurker upgrade is coming. Layer is done. No spire will be forthcoming here. No third gas either. I think that third gas should be taken any moment. Definitely have enough drones over here to do so. Um, just because we're not going to have enough gas for Lurker. What are we doing? Plus one melee attack coming. Queen's Nest. How can we possibly afford all this if we don't have a third gas? Get the third gas, dude. Okay. A seventh hatchery. Seven hatchery here. Makes sense. We've got the extra mineral income. We do not have gas to make everything. So how are we going to... Like, What are we doing? We're going to get hive. Triple upgrade. There's the gas. Jeez. I was really starting to worry there. Lurkers start to be made and then he gets the gas. I really feel like the moment you click the button to start making lurker upgrade is when you should take the the extractor, the third extractor. That that's the rule for me anyway. I click for me I have it on T. I click T to make lurker upgrade and I immediately start this gas geyser. Don't worry about that guys. He's just killing something in the front of his uh base here. Some lings try to make uh, contact with this army. He sees where it is anyway, and he's starting to set up the lurkers. Sunken colonies getting into position. Army's going to come down here. Um, BTS still looking pretty good. He needs that ling speed, though. Okay, there's the ling speed coming in just in time here. The last possible second. Lurkers, more of them hitting the field. To spread these out a little bit more set up and best is actually gonna fall back so many lings out here now bts really a monster when it comes to the macro he's got so much out here sometimes this positioning uh leaves something to, to be desired but his macro is very very good and he really does favor lings it appears Lurkers here making their way over at the last possible second. Zealot's going to get on top of them, making them a little bit less useful as their uh, spine's getting spread quite badly. Ling's going to come in from all sides, but this army not moving. Oh, man. Are we going to see BTS crumble here again uh, as the Protoss army pushes through? Big storms on a lot of this stuff. Zealot's... Doing work on the mineral line and BTS's army just falling apart here. Dude, I feel like he really thought that Bess was going to throw everything into that uh, that pocket here. But he moved around this side and BTS just didn't react fast enough. The Lings coming through did kill off a few of those uh, Dragoons. But look at the rallies of Zealots making their way to the front here just in the nick of time. Uh, right as the lings are popping out and getting ready to to fight here We've got only plus one plus one. Do we have armor? Yeah, we do have armor. We don't have adrenal glands yet A uh, lot of lurker eggs being morphed and a counterattack maybe gonna come through He's checking to see if there's a third, but there's no third base. It's just zealot rallies coming forward and forward and forward and oh my goodness the lurker eggs being destroyed here that might be the nail in the coffin, guys. That was a ton of Hydras morphed into Lurker, spent all that gas, but just did not have the units there, did not have the spread on those Lurkers. So the one single storm ruins everything. And Bez just going to keep pushing through. And once you're on top of the rallies like this, there's really not much that the Zerg player can do to save themselves. They're going to pull the drones. They're going to... Try to fight with whatever is popping out, but the Zealot rallies keep making their way forward. We're going to have more storms coming up here, and everything is just dying. GG is called, and BTS leaves this final game. The score, what was it? Two wins for BTS? 
and four wins for best. Something like that. It was uh, a little bit best favored, but we did have some great games in there as well. Some pretty close ones. That one from Radeon really comes to mind, man. That one sticks out like a sore thumb. What a crazy, crazy game that was. Uh, with the kind of base trade at the end being the the cherry on top. Really enjoyed that one. Guys, let me know what's, which game was your favorite from this series. And thank you again for watching. It's been your daily dose of Brood War. I'll see you in the next one.